All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 436 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Bala. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And today, we're going to talk more Georgia Southern football. I know I, I'm supposed to talk about Atlanta Falcons football, but to be quite honest, I'm I'm not necessarily disappointed in the Atlanta Falcons because hey, it's the NFL. But it's just so much going on with college football and what George Southern's doing. It is exciting. It is a very exciting time to be um, following or being a fan or just keeping your ear close to what George Southern is doing because it is a great time in Statesboro. We're going to talk about all of that and everything on that umbrella. We will end up doubling back to the Atlanta Falcons as they play the Rams. I'll do a pregame show on my YouTube channel and we'll just go from there. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I am on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Uh, you can listen to the podcast on any of those avenues. You also can, uh, if you want, want to watch the visual side of the show, it's YouTube and Rumble. And um, you can just listen to at your leisure. All the links down in the description are there to help promote and support the channel. If you want to check those areas out, that'd be great as well. And uh, we're just going to get into... What is going on at Georgia Southern? I mean, we just got finished beating Nebraska, you know, elevating the program to uh, not necessarily to a you know powerhouse or anything like that. But we're getting national recognition all over the country. People are still, uh, you know, thinking that we're the other Georgia team down here. But that's not the case. <laughs> that's another story for another day. Don't want to talk about Georgia State. But uh we getting a lot of recognition, and the recognition is looking really good. We got to go play UAB, and if we win that game, you know, we're going to be looking good for the season, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. First and foremost, I want to talk about Jared Benko, our athletic director for Georgia Southern. He was extended for five more years. He gets a contract extension, and it kind of lines up with what Coach Clay Helton is under contract for as well, so these two guys are somewhat tied at the hip for I think I'm not sure because I can't remember Coach Clay Hilton's contract completely. If you guys know, please let me know in the comment section on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter at VF Baller. Just let me know because I cannot remember. I usually have the information in front of me, but you know that a part of the show just came on the fly, so I don't know. But these two guys, as far as the uh, football program goes, have made extraordinary strides to to bring the attempt to make this program back to the prominence it was albeit it was mostly in the fcs but still we i have to show that we're able to run with the other teams in the fbs and with this coaching hire and with jared binko coming in and showing what he can do at georgia southern it is a phenomenal you know phenomenal thing that's been going on for the past few years and not only just in football you look at all the other athletics that they've been doing i mean the golf team is, is doing great right now you know the baseball team did some nice things the women's basketball team it was showing some um shine it was was doing pretty well at one point as well uh so it is it, all over the place rifle team I mean, you know, even the cheerleaders are winning trophies. So it's, it's, it's just a good thing to see if Georgia Southern football could do the same thing. And with you, you know, with uh, Eric, um, I'm about to call him Jared. I'm call him Eric. <laughs> with Jared Benko at the helm showing and leading the way of what he wants as far as excellence for this uh, program. It's just it's, it's exactly what you want. Because there was also rumblings that he was possibly going to be going elsewhere uh, and, all, and, and other teams were, or other programs were trying to get him away because he's already been doing a great job prior to this football season. So with all the things he's been doing, other schools were probably trying to get to him, but he decided to be extended for the next five years. His contract is up, according to Frank Solkowski on WJCL News. It is up to is uh up to 2027, and his base salary has gone up. He's making don't like to talk about people's money, but he's making a a significant amount of money for the job that he's doing. Um, uh, as of right now, I think everything is on point for this team, or the football team, and this program to continue to elevate themselves to a higher level. And you wouldn't want nobody else that's leading the charge in my opinion, other than Co uh, other than Clay Helton, I'm not Clay Helton, but Jared Binko. And you want somebody that's on the football uh, team uh, and the coach like a Clay Helton because Clay Helton has done a 
pretty good job so far. I mean, with the Morgan State game and then we turn right right back around and beat Nebraska and a phenomenal, you know, way to win that game. And then now going up against UAB, I talked about that in a previous episode on what we are um up against. But I want to talk about what could be what could be the possibility. What's the possibility if we end up beating UAB? And we're looking at the rest of the schedule because we play Ball State after that. And I want to say after that we play Georgia State. Let me pull up the. Let me pull up the. The let's see where is there. There we go. Let me pull up the schedule, and we can talk about this really quick. Um, at the Ball State, we go play Coastal Carolina, which is not the Coastal Carolina of a few years ago. Then we go play Georgia State. Now, I like to take this one game at a time, and I'm not about to go through all the possible wins and losses of every game that we have here. Um, But I will say this. What if they do beat UAB? And to be honest, it's not going to be as easy as we think it is, but it's a possibility that we can start off at, you know, 4-0 before we get to conference play. Uh, I talked about what we need to defend in the UA with the UAB game. I will turn back around and talk about that in the pregame show this weekend before the game. So hopefully you guys will check that out on YouTube and Rumble. But I'm looking at this uh, schedule. The way things are going down right here, it is a very good possibility. And like I said, I don't want to go too. I really don't want to go no further than the Ball State game because once Ball State comes through, it is conference time, conference play. Ball, not of all state, but Coastal Carolina and everybody else in the Sun Belt is going to be a tough task to get through this. But the way things are shaping up, what if this team ends up being undefeated and going up against Appalachian State at the end of the season? You see what I'm saying? You know, this type of stuff, and you're you're playing every week, and you're playing at the level that you're playing at, Obviously, you have other teams that's on the schedule. That's definitely a threat to take you down every on that particular Saturday. But when you're looking at what you have in front of you, it's actually looking uh, – it, 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 it doesn't look as tough as we thought it was in the beginning of the season. I sat here and said it was going to go 8-4. and four. I was one of the few that actually uh, was touting that back in March or April. And – I used to put the meme up with uh count uh um uh the count from Sesame Street holding up the number eight just to troll people to let them know like look I'm I'm sitting on this eight wins and after the game against Nebraska and if we beat UAB it could be a real conversation that we could possibly pull five more wins out of what we have here but what happens if we can run the table and we end up down in November losing maybe one game or or, or none or none games <laughs> that's not even run none games but zero games what do we look like at that point i mean how much how big that is for recognition you know so when, when you're looking at this team and i've heard that there i heard a little rumble is that we're going to have some recruits at the ball state game or, or, or guys who want the are looking into coming to the school, and you look at the other games, the James Madison's, the South Alabama game, the Marshall and the Appalachian States games. This is this is one of the reasons why, and I'm gonna do a separate video on this, and I, I need to do a, a, a separate video, especially I, I probably will put it more into fruition once we beat UA or Angleton once we beat UAB. I want us to beat UAB, but. If we beat UAB, I'm really going to talk about this. And I'm just going to give you a small gist of it. We as a fan base, we as, you know, um, alum and people who have been to the school and have been supporting the school for a very long time, if you haven't already, you really want to do that. Support this school with, to the fullest because with Jared Banco being extended five more years, Clay Helton is at the coaching position. You got all this opportunity right now to be successful this season year one you have the opportunity to be successful year one and if we are it's just going to continue to garner more eyes on this team 
much of a bigger fan base. You have no idea what these games would be like if Marshall and Appalachian State are, you know, one loss teams and we are possibly at best or at worst a one loss team as well. And we had to play both of those teams back to back in Statesboro. It's going to be bananas. We already got recruits coming into Ball State. We need fans to go out there and be supportive as well. The James Madison game looked like a good one that, you know, people may show up to, you know, recruits and and scouts and all this other stuff. That Marshall and Appalachian State game, especially based on what they've done already, all three of these teams have done already go up to Power 5 schools and beat these teams. It will behoove us to support the team. I'm not saying, like, by coming out your pocket, but never stop screaming how good Georgia Southern can be to anybody and everybody who wants to listen. Represent this team, especially if you love Georgia Southern football. Get it in everybody's ear. Hey, you need to watch what these guys are doing. Hey, you need to pay attention of what these guys are putting on or the product they're putting on the field. Watch how Coach Clay Helton is is um, resurrecting a, a program and making it into a once again a winning culture. And I'm not talking about like winning six, seven, eight games. These guys are on a trajectory to be winning double digit um seasons every year if things continue to where they're going. And I know the defense is a little suspect. I get it. That can be worked out throughout the season. But as far as what we're looking at on this uh on this roster and what we're looking at on this schedule, it could be a situation where Jared Benko and Coach Clay Helton is going to be looking really looking really nice once this team uh, shows how much, uh, you know, success they can have. And like I said, it's a good time to jump on board. It's a great time to jump on board and be a supporter. You know, the more we need, the better that we, the better we are. Because at the end of the day, we 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 need to show the everybody in the Sun Belt, everybody in the in the group of five, everybody in the power five, that this team is prideful. This team has something to play for. We smelt, we touched, we ate championships here at Georgia Southern. And we need to sit here and act like we know what we're doing. And I'm not saying that we're not, but we need to amplify that completely. Because when you got a guy, when Coach uh, Clay Helton that's going to be here for a good while, because it was a phenomenal article that was out that – uh, was put out about him wanting to make a, a perennial group of five team as a part of his legacy to make one a top-notch team and you got Jared Binko here that's going to be the next uh the AD for the next five years we have an opportunity to support what this team has and with enough support we could be in a situation where we're not even worrying about none of these guys are leaving because the fan base and everybody is supportive and we love them so much. They may want to stick around after the contract is up. But by then, in five years or four years, I expect Georgia Southern to be, uh, dare I might say, better than what App State is putting out. Dare I say that? Better than what Appalachian State putting out? Because don't get it twisted. Appalachian State is just a well-disciplined coach. Yes, they do have some great recruits, but we recruit to we 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 recruit from the same pool that they do. So, like our athletes is just as good as their athletes, and vice versa. And you get a lot of three-star guys. You maybe get one four-star guy. That's got the same thing with George Southern did. Both of our teams got like one. I think we got one or two uh, four-star guys. But when you get those guys in with that mentality that they can feel that they can run with anybody, the win at Texas A&M happened. The win at Marshall happened uh, for Marshall against Notre Dame happened, and uh, what we done in Nebraska that happened that that helps as well. So at the end of the day, what we need to really look into is just support. Support Jared Benko. He decided to stay here for five more years. We need to give him that support because he could have possibly been gone. Coach Clay Heldon decided to leave L.A. to come down here and coach the Georgia Southern Eagles. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Defense, yeah, yeah we're going to talk more about, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk more about that later. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, the offense is on point, but the defense, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And um, we are in the trajectory to make things happen 
and I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. Um, I don't want to beat the dead horse. We're back up to the 15 minute mark. I think I said everything I needed to say. Congratulations to Coach. Jer um, I keep calling him Coach. Congratulations to AD uh, Jared Binko for extending for five more years, getting that money, getting that bag, and actually representing, you know, Georgia Southern to the fullest. And Coach Clay Helton, hopefully he will continue to be the coach that he looks like he's going to be for uh, this uh, school. You know, if you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I am on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. The visual side of this is on YouTube and Rumble. Um, I, I, I love what's going on here. I really do. And hopefully you guys love it as well. I'm going to get up out of here. I got a couple things I got to do as far as, you know, working on more content for this uh, podcast and other things I have to do as well. I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting. I really, really do. I cannot thank you guys enough. All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your time, and I'll see you again on the next one. All right, y'all. Now take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace.